Hello folks, Tufty Indigo here, back with another Forged Alliance Forever game. This is a 3v3 ladder match on a generated map. On the north side, we have two side runs and a UEF. Our side runs are Info Action Ratio and Martine H333, who are both in these fetching red colors. And our UEF player in the orange is Zele Volari. The Commissar has recently casted one of their games, and that was very exciting, so maybe this one will be exciting as well. Let's see. On the south side, we have uh, an Aeon and Seraphim, the Alien Alliance, I suppose, or Aliens and Alien Lovers. We have Jackhammer 2K in the purple, and then we have Milf Hunter in the middle, and Alexander Berlin on the right here in the lighter blue. And... Uh, if you've been looking at the chat messages there, you've seen there's been some discussion on north side about who's going to go air. Uh, all players have got their first land factory down. Uh, that looks like an air that's queued up here for info action ratio. Uh, Sale is uh, confused about whether ACU is perhaps it's walked a bit further than they intended but it's just gone far enough to to beam build this uh this hydrocarbon plant so that doesn't look too wrong uh meanwhile if we look on the south side everybody's put a first land factory down um and this looks like it's going to be an air uh, here for jackhammer uh also a bit of negotiation going on over here about uh who's taking which mass points and Info Action Ratio is planning a drop once they get their air factory online and a, a transport out. They've even paused their land factory to let them get that up. Perhaps they were briefly stored there if we just have a look at their eco. Um, yeah, look, looks like they've suffered a brief energy stall there. So they paused in order to unstall. That's uh, good awareness there. Um, however, that's uh, the kind of awareness that you'd expect from players of, of this level. Nobody below 1,200 in, in this game. And it's fairly balanced. The, uh, the south side is all in the 1,400s, whereas the north side, uh, both of our, our red Cybran players are in the high 1,200s, and Sele is just shy of 1,700 there. So um, a bit more imbalance on the north side than the south side, but between the two teams, uh, as you can see in the corner here, this is a 98% match quality which uh, which is pretty good. That's exceptionally high. The uh, Neuroxis generator has given us an interesting map here. There's some rather useless water at the back, and there's some water over here. feel like we will not get navy in these lakes, but it could be useful, especially for the southern players who are on for some, some hover units to, uh, to come out here, cross through this narrow gap, and attack on the side. That might lead to some unexpected attacking later in the game. Now it looks like the south side has uh, been faster with their transports. All three players have got transports out going to these plateaus. Um, uh, Alexander Berlin's dropped one engineer here and is going off over here with some scouts ahead to check it hasn't already been dropped from the other side. Uh, Jackhammer has dropped their first engineer off on this plateau. Oh. Oh, I don't think that was a drop, actually. I think that engineer walked there. I wasn't entirely looking in that direction. But they've dropped three engineers here. This is uh, to put down a couple of factories. It's obviously a vitally important location, uh, especially since it is walkable on this side. So the, the north team has much better access. And then the remaining two engineers here. And then if we look up at Milf Hunter, they've done a very, very cheeky drop in the far north here in what is really the, the hot team's territory. And it has been scouted now by info action ratio, but they're going to lose their scout for that. However, this drop is a bit more contested, um, but it's a ghetto gunship. So uh, two light assault bots to uh, mop up that enemy engineer and the mass points and an engineer with them to build some dark blue extractor in its place and presumably to turn out some factories. Oh yeah, land factory already coming out here. Um, however, another drop coming out from info action ratio. So this is really, this is the contest. However, also 
uh, Jack Hammer 2K uh, is being hemmed in by a T1PD. Uh, so they all need, but they're already churning out RT, so they should be able to contest that with no problem, as there's nothing to, to help support this PD here. So uh, a lot of aggression from the south side is what we've seen so far. However, this has been matched on the north side by the commanders walking up the center. Now, the center of the map here doesn't really have a lot to fight over. There's a handful of mexes and they're very spread out, so it's unclear really what benefit they're going to get from uh, from contesting this far forward. They're going to get a, like a couple of mass points only, uh, which if you compare that to the amount of mass that's in the, the players' home bases, the team's home bases, it's not a huge amount. Um, however, with two comms, they're going to be able to contest it effectively. And now the breakout has come for Jackhammer. Uh, as I predicted, the uh, the T1 PD here didn't last very long, but uh, there's also two factories to churn out those T1 units. Mantises. They are Mantises. Oh, well, well, I missed them. I think they were Mantises. And actually, it looks like Jackham is really going to secure this plateau for themselves. So there's a lot of units streaming up now. Uh, both of these factories are being dedicated to sending units up this. And uh, and we can see now Martine also bringing his comm up. Though I think the, the units alone will be able to secure this. The, this production is just not outputting enough stuff. However, because they've uh, they've been so aggressive here in, in uh, putting this factory forward, um, the South team's been able to claim both of these side plateaus uh, pretty uncontested there. And uh, that's going to be a good advantage for them. Three match points on each one. Um, yeah, and if, if you can just take that without being contested, that's pretty strong. And it's going to take some air to dislodge them. Um, we see one bomber coming out here for Alexander Berlin. Um, it is just flying into some inties, so might not get much work done. But it's probably going to get a pass. Uh, didn't seem to hit anything there. I did hit the uh, Tech 2 NG, but did not kill it. So it looks like Jackham is going to get chucked off this plateau now. Um, info action ratio not going forward to fight, but is uh, reclaiming this mass point and presumably that one as well. But it was a, a really worthwhile distraction. As I said, these two are pretty strong. Um, the lone bombers here for Alexander Berlin are not going to get any more work done, I think. They're just being descended upon by interceptors as soon as they come in. Uh, also, interesting interesting matchup here between these two engineers for Sele, who is uh, not using them right now. Attention must be elsewhere. Oh, probably on the interceptors. But there's also these artilleries that are not really going to take the plateau on their own. Uh, perhaps another engineer drop over here for Alexander Berlin would be uh, better than just throwing these T1 bombers into the mouths of the waiting interceptors. Um, also, this cheeky drop up here has gone pretty well. Um, there's interceptors coming out to really look at what's going on. And there's another drop coming in. Engineers, tanks. Info action ratio wants milf hunter off this land this is my backyard uh, slightly bad positioning for this drop the uh, these should be at the front but the engineers went to the front and some of them are already down um, they've got a t1 pd up but they've already taken out all of those units um, there's a few here they're not being microed and I think this could... Oh, yeah, they've got factory, a factory going. I think this is going to be enough to get rid of Milf Hunter from the, the red backyard. 
So that's two reasonably successful counter invasions going on here, but still, um, both of the, the edge plateaus going to the south team uncontested. Meanwhile, the center is hotting up a bit. Still two commanders here. Um, units being ferried to the front lines. Uh, is this drop going to work? Oh, where's it going? I thought it was going to drop over here, but no, it's going to be a ghetto gunship. No, it's going to drop. There you go. Big drop. Uh, the transports had to beat a hasty retreat. It got a bit of damage in on this mech, but uh, the mechs didn't get finished off. But this is looking pretty strong. It's going to take some mass points. It's going to take the build power. These are all tech two, these mechs. So that's a quite a big loss there. And there's really nothing to fight this because all of the fighting units are up at the front. Um, I feel like the North team could reasonably push in here. However, T2 PD's just gone up for uh, Milf Hunter. And uh, he's pushing out bravely into two commanders. Uh, he does have gun and a start in Nano Repair, but cancelled it. Uh, so, managed to relieve them of this mechs, but this is now a bit of a stalemate because um, it's going to be very costly for North to try and push into this T2PD. However, this raid, the, the airdrop here, the raid's keeping moving, so it's leaving a lot of stuff behind. Um, there's a T1PD there that it's just run away from, but it's, it's taking out T2 mechs after T2 mechs. Um, still not really enough to contest it. Two of the tanks have gone, but this is still more than enough to take a few more mexes. Yeah, this T2 mex and, and a couple of those T1P gens, all at risk here. Uh, another two flares. Uh, they're actually going to do it there because the tanks are out of position. Uh, GG says Jackhammer. I'm not really sure why. I mean, this was a bit of a loss, but the south side is now mainly on Tech 2. They've got T2 PDs scattered about. I, I, it's a lot less vulnerable to raiding than this area was. Um, so that, I, I feel like they're able to stabilize this. Uh, this is in a bit of trouble. Th these drops from Orange are doing so much work. And there's just not enough concentration from Alexander Berlin. Um, Trying to get up a T1PD, but the units are heading south. It's, it's not going to help. And it goes down immediately anyway to the, to the artillery. So, the, yeah, another really strong orange drop. However, orange comms just kind of on its own here. Um, it has taken some damage. I wonder if it was fighting on the front line. Oh, it was on the front line earlier, so I, uh, I guess I just missed a bit of action there. But the front line's still reasonably static. Not much more build-up. Still some T2 uh, oh, tactical missile defense coming up now. Obviously, the missiles have got to be uh, something that you're going to expect. Meanwhile, Martine has decided to go around the outside of these defenses and is perhaps emboldened by Sailor's uh, effective drops is going to go for some raiding into the soft underbelly on this side. Um, that looks like artillery, but where did it come from? Commander coming out to try and uh, to try and whittle these down as they get through, and that's going to be good, but it's not enough. There's enough of these have got through to cause a real problem for the south. Uh, meanwhile, there was a, another drop from info action ratio to try and take this plateau, but it's really not strong enough. This is going to get evicted, and the South is going to retain control of both of these side plateaus. Um, but the center is where it's all at. Uh, big raids now getting very spread out, so a smaller force like this one might be able to clear this up unassisted. 
However, it is mainly artillery, and uh, if Martin keeps his um, keeps his artillery moving, oh, well, never mind. He's lost his artillery mostly. So, some raids of varying success. Not much raiding going on from the south team. Oh, gunships now are coming out for Zele, who, um, yeah, is exploiting complete lack of AA on this side of the, the islands. Um, some Inties come in, but not enough as, yeah, they're up to T3. They've got ASFs in their mix. Um, this could really do a lot of work. And, and Zele is really looking like the MVP on the North team at the moment. I mean, they are the highest rated. Uh, we did talk about the, the level imbalance at the start. And so they're, they're being really effective with these these daring attacks. Two, two really good drops. Um, so the one on this side has been repelled now. Uh, and now really strong in air. T3 air. Uh, well, the south side not fielding T3 air uh, and really basically nothing in a they did have a few inties they've gone um have they started teching up yeah they do have a t3 hq um nothing else is upgraded there uh and don't see anything here uh oh, there's an air factory that's just making engineers sure and this one is turned off but these are all still t1 so um, it looks like Jackhammer's the one who's in the best position to um, to save air for the South team. But they've really got a lot of work to do. Uh, a raid coming out for Jackhammer, but I, I, I think this is a bit of a desperate raid. They had the units. They were just going to get picked apart by gunships anyway. They might as well push in a bit. But they're pushing into T2PD. T2PD outranges T1RT. So this is a big problem for them. This is not going to get anything done. And so we've we've had a, a bit of an interesting imbalance where both of the players have started putting T2PD in the places where they're being attacked before they've really got the T2 tanks coming out. Though I do see there's some TAC missile launchers, uh, some flak, and some hoplites coming out of Martine. Um, so this is quite a reasonable attack force. This could really get work done against the front here. Most of these... Oh, so there's T3 mobile he heavy artillery on the front line. Just as I say, this is all... that. There's hardly any T2 units here. That's because there's T3 units. What is going on here? This is a really uh, bizarre tech up. Um, very interesting. However, another drop now coming out for the North team. Um, seems to be only engineers. This That looks like some AA is going to get dropped as well. And they're putting down a land factory. But the push in the center is coming in. Oh. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I thought I'd, I'd missed a com death there as all of these uh, units transferred from info action ratio to Martine. But no, he was just giving them over to allow more effective micro. That's really good team play there. And these are really pushing in effectively. The hoplites in the mix are getting a lot of work done with their higher DPS. Um, but the whole force is pushing in here. The uh, the mobile missile launchers at the back here. Um, there is a bit of TMD here, so that's they're not going to get damaged done until that gets taken down. But they're certainly providing a lot of pressure. Um, and these two comms on the front line are starting to look very threatened. In fact, it's all three comms on the front line here. With three, actually, they should be able to field enough firepower um, to repel this, which is why these units are, uh, are trying to run straight past and not stopping to engage them. But all the same, that's very risky. If you're going to get out tech and walked over like this, you don't want to have all three comms in the same place. And now there's a continental drop. Oh my god! Orange! These drops! What are you doing? Mad lad! 
say they uh, did lose it on this occasion. The, their Inties just didn't keep up with the Continental and it was taken out by Jack Hammers. And as we said earlier, Jack Hammer really in place to be the savior of the team for the, the South Air Force. And yeah, came in clutch there, stopping that, what could have been a very powerful drop. And now it's gonna be clear to North that uh, they, they need a lot more ASFs if they wanna keep penetrating the South Territory with drops like that. However, um, Stingers coming out are coming another Continental. I wonder if maybe this, uh, and it's all T1 RT on it, it looks like. Um, yeah, it remains to be seen. Uh, th there's a, a mixed ASF and Inti fleet here just to provide some cover for it. Oh, they do seem to have had a very decisive air engagement with that. So looks like this one's going to get in unmolested pretty much. Take out some gunships on the way. Where is it going to drop? Things are looking pretty bad for the south side at the moment. They're getting dropped again in... Just make up your mind where you're going to drop it. You never know when you're going to fly over some SAMs and lose everything. Just looking for the best drop point. But here we go. It looks like they've settled. T1 RT right in the soft underbelly of the southern eco. And again, there's no units at home to, to fight this. Um, I think some NGs are going to be rushing to spam up PD, but I think this is going to get a lot done. Again, Mex is going down. They're absolutely melting the T2 Mexes, running away from the PD. And, and uh, yeah, a GG comes out again. Uh, I think there's uh, maybe a bit of uh, defeatist talk on the South team. Oh, and... Milf Hunter control case, but their comm is still there. There we go. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's always sad when a player goes out like that, but that was the player that got raided here and then here and now right at the back as well. So perhaps they feel like there's nothing more they can contribute, but there's still a lot of eco on the south side. This is the first time we've actually looked at the eco, but if we compare, they are maybe uh, 170 mass behind. That's pretty bad position to be in, but 300 is not nothing. Um, they're still in the game. And as we can see here, there's some missile barrages coming out. Is that one, two, three, four? Four TMLs trying to take on this. Spam me some E, says Martijn. Uh, oh, yeah, they are looking very much behind in the energy game. Oh, no, actually, it's info. Action ratio has got the least power income there. Uh, and probably power stored. They've turned off their factories. Let's have a quick look at their eco. No, they've got full energy now. Um, I don't know why they've got that. No, they, they, these are the ones on the plateau, though, so they're not going to do anything useful. Makes sense to keep those turned off or, or even to reclaim them. Um, some some ferrying of units to this plateau going on. It's a bit of a weird place to drop. Perhaps they're uh, hoping to build some artillery to try and threaten this. Oh, yeah, just putting down some engineers, a T3 and a T2 engineer. They could definitely be putting down some RT or a missile base here. Just to just to get rid of this, which is surrounded by T1 anti air and the mobile T1 anti air. Um, anyway, a stream of T1 bombers now coming out for Jackhammer. Um, just hoping to take on the plateau. Um, North was very incautiously flying the air over the back line of the south base. And so uh, that seems to have gone away. Oh no, there's quite a few more at home coming out here. But yeah, if, if you uh, wanna be doing some defensive bombing, T1 bombers are really good for that because they're so cheap that you can afford to lose them to the ASFs. 
and they're just gradually putting in damage. If you can, and and they're a good way of luring the enemy SFs over your air defense if you have any. Uh, not much air defense here to to capitalize on that though. Um, but yeah, this uh, is quite a costly run. Bit of a mass donation here. If we look, if we zoom out a bit, there's. Uh, 6k 6k mass in this area to be reclaimed and didn't really get a lot done um, even though there's only t2 pd in this area there's quite a concentration of it so another t2 land push coming through the center here for martine and it's going to hit alexander berlin head on who's in the middle of a T3 upgrade, uh, unassisted. Um, the missile launchers are coming out first. Heralding the attack there with Explody Engineers. Uh, just on the edge of the TMD range. So uh, if they knew that this commander was on an upgrade, they might push forward a bit more quickly. Um, I had a big explosion there, but I did not see it. But um, in any case, the uh, the missile base here has been effective at clearing info action ratio on this off this plateau. Um, another continental trying to drop onto this plateau gets shot down for its trouble. So much T1AA here. Um, a second one comes in, but doesn't repeat the mistake. It's uh, just doing a bit of uh, a bit of eco raiding. Um, ASF's coming in to defend, but like, what are they going to defend it from? It's all ground-based AA. Perhaps they will take the opportunity to take out these bombers, which are uh, also trying to evict info action ratio. Info action ratio not having a very good time at the moment. Got evicted from here, getting evicted from here. Um, they've set up their fire base here, but it's, uh, yeah, RT, RT and, and uh, energy to power up the RT with that uh, adjacency bonus. And they're just hoping to wipe purple off the face of this plateau. Um, Alexander Berlin here, walking up the hill to try and evict info action ratio on this side. They're still holding on. They're about to lose that mechs. Um, wow, they've, uh, they're using the ability of the Mantises to assist construction there. So this is going up even though the engineer that started it has been destroyed. Um, however, it's, uh, it's anti-air. That's really not going to do very much. Um, bit of an oversight in microing here. These units have uh, got nothing else to do. They should be pushing on to take this other mechs. Um, so far, even though the North team has, has been losing some of these uh, outcrops, um, it's very much had the initiative. There's not really, apart from a, a couple of little drops that got cleared up by PD, this one has been left behind. They, they've, the mainland hasn't really been threatened at all. Whereas, as we've seen, the south has been troubled by raid after raid, mainly from Sele, who's been really on it with keeping that pressure on and keeping the initiative in favor of the north side. Uh, and again, if we look at the mass here, uh, still 310 mass ahead for North, and and I think that's really the reason why. Um, also, if we look at these two edge plateaus, the ones that I've been talking about all along, they were taken pretty much uncontested. These have still only got T1 mexes. This one is on its upgrade now, um, but the upgrade has been paused. It might have been waiting for an engineer to come and do it, but that there is no engineer on the way. That's just got lost. Uh, this engineer is supposed to be doing some stuff. Uh, I think it was supposed to be assisting, but it's set to reclaim, but it can't get up there anyway. So that's not going to... I think that was like some, some misuse of the, the full stop or period button to select an engineer to do that. These engineers should be upgrading this. Um, that could, that kind of thing. I'm over here as well, though. This might be about to go down to uh, artillery. But yes, that would really 
here we go. Now the artillery is going for the AA instead. Uh, I think if Info Action were microing this, they might just hit the Mexes first. Since nothing else that's on the island really matters. Um, oh, apart from the build power, of course, which is going to rebuild those Mexes. But for the first time now, uh, a really threatening drop coming out from Jackhammer. However, one of the transports... Oh, both of the transports shot down. That one at the last second. It was in the middle of the drop animation. That could have been pretty big with those T2 bots there. Um, the hoplites, presumably. Yeah, really exposed mexes here. Not much in the way of land to defend. Uh, no units up here. These could have had free reign here. Uh, they wouldn't have got anything done if they'd gone that way. But if they'd gone over here, could have taken out a lot of those T3 land factories. A lot of the build power that's pushing units into the center here. Um, at, but despite the, the unit advantage, you know, look at... This is an overwhelming T2 force here. This has nothing to fight that. There's, there's a handful of T2 units. There's a little bit of PD, but almost nothing yet left from the earlier raids. There's, there's the two comms, but, uh, you know, comms on their own, not that good. I, I think, actually, if, if this all pushed south, they could end the game here and now. But instead, Northside is going for standoff tactics. Um, they've gone for a missile base, MMLs. They're exerting pressure on this, but... Um, They've mainly just forced some TMDs up here. Uh, that looks like it might have had a radar in the middle of it. Uh, these have completely bypassed the TMDs. They're going for these mexes. Good shot. Let's see, is this one going to take out this mex? And the Mex is in the middle of an upgrade. And it's still being capped. These engineers have their orders. Cap, cap the Mex. Build the storages. But there's no Mex there to cap. Uh, Scouts now coming out for Jackhammer. And yeah, they've they've seen what's waiting for them in the center here now. Um, they've seen what's going on here. Lots of engineers coming out. They've realized if the scouts can fly over you, then bombers can also fly over you. Time to build SAMs. Um, so SAMs going up there. Strategic launch detected. But a nuke comes out. Here it comes, and it's from Zele. I know anti-nuke, says Zele. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure what they're saying there. They know that there is one. They know where it is. They know that they don't have one. Um, I'm not sure what they're saying. But uh, GG coming out for Alexander Berlin. And it looks like this nuke is going to land. No, it got anti-nuked. But again, the GGs have already come out. Um, but if we look at the center, the MMLs... Exerting pressure here. Um, again, just on the edge or just outside the um, the TMD range. And, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, a bit of information being given away by Jack Hammer. No, we thought you fire at front where there's no nuke defense. Um, Jackhammer going for a T3 upgrade, but I'm not sure I'd be standing there going for a T3 upgrade, having just seen what's over here, and that there's a nuke out, and that you don't have nuke defense. Uh, nuke defense going up now. But can it get loaded in time? Um, a chicken coming out for Alexander Berlin. Um, being used defensively, which is not the best role for chickens. Second nuke comes out. Where's this one going? It could be going the same place. It could be going the front now that it's been... Uh, front, please. But no. Here it goes. And uh, if... Where is the nuke defense? No, that's TND. 
you would expect it to have all the engineers around it, but they're all around this uh, air HQ. Um, I'm going to guess that it is not yet loaded. And here comes the nuke. And it wasn't loaded. And they've recalled. Northside wins the game. Um, now, after that at front, please, it wouldn't have helped if it had been at the front because this was nowhere near loaded and it would definitely have landed before, you know, that it, it landed here. It could have landed here 10 seconds earlier. That could have been a, a, a game ender right there with the comms still on the front line. But as it turned out, it made no difference. So, great action there from Northside. Uh, it would be unfair to say Zelly carried because the pushing from the center uh, from both Martine and Info Action Ratio did a lot of work and are obviously taking this island back after the, and the, sorry, this plateau, the, and this plateau back after the very cheeky drops from the south side was instrumental. If they'd let these live, then that would have been a real problem for the north side. So definitely every player on north contributed to that victory. But I feel like Sele gets the MVP award for just continuing airdrops in the most vulnerable places. And then of course, for ending the game with a double nuke. One of them landed. Uh, on the south side, I really liked the aggressive play at the start, the cheeky drops. Um, those did let them keep those side plateaus unmolested um, just by kind of uh, focusing the defensive effort on the, on the extra cheeky bits. But they didn't capitalize on this. Uh, I see one of these Mexes got upgraded to T, uh, got upgraded to T2 at the end. Uh, two of them did. This one's still stuck and paused on its upgrade. But yeah, they, they just they needed to capitalize on their economy more. The the South team, after losing its its cheeky plateaus, um, and not really contesting the center and getting raided all the time, was continuously behind on economy for the game, and they just didn't. They just weren't able to keep up in tech and in units with the continuing pressure and they never really won the initiative back so i hope you enjoyed the game as well this has been forge lines forever i've been tufty indigo you've been lovely as always and i'll see you again next time toodle pip <laughs>